this book came about because I was one of those people who always said, oh, I'd love to write a novel. And then I turned 50, and you know those people who say, I'd love to play the piano. Yes. And it gets to a point think, you do know there's a way you could <laughs> do that. You could just take some lessons and shut up about it. Um, people often say it like, I'd love to go to Spain. Places that aren't really that far away. away. I'd love to see Devon, because that's just there. <laughs> yeah. So I was being a bit like that about a book. I thought, I don't want to be that guy. So... Uh, and people kept sniffing around to get me to do some memoirs. <laughs> and I thought, here's an idea. I'll get them to buy some memoirs. But on the Viso, they also publish this novel that they know nothing about. And they have no guarantee of its, you know, any, any quality threshold. Um, and happily... Uh, they Hod didn't read the small print. Hodder said, Hodder said yes. And so... Uh, Force me to write novel because I think anyone can start a novel. It's very easy to start a novel. Finishing is the really difficult bit, and that's where you need someone emailing you, going, uh, "That novel we paid you for, <laughs> any sign of it?" Uh, I was talking to someone at the office, and they, I said to him about the, the novel, and I said, "I like it quite good. It would love to be good." And I said, well, "Look at it this way: if you finish your novel, and this is a good thing for anything in life, really. You know, it's like building a shelf or anything." If you finish it, it'll be one of the best books in the world. And it's true, because the vast majority of books are in drawers, they're in files, it's a dusty part of your computer. They're unfinished. Sure. And a shelf is just two brackets and a blank book on the floor if unfinished. Exactly. So I see the analogy. Yeah. yeah. You, you've been drawn to, like you said, a story that maybe people wouldn't have been. You surprised yourself in the story that you wrote. I, I heard you say that you thought that you would maybe go for something a bit more cynical, maybe it's quite a sentimental story in the It is. I, somehow, when I was a kid, and I guess, yeah, and I guess it's about who, who you become and when you write a novel. I mean, it's very, it, it you know, I, I, when I, I finished this book on my 53rd birthday, and there aren't many things you do for the first time at 53. Um, and so I suppose your novel is in a way dictated by who you are at the time of writing. And I have slightly become a sentimental old fool. So I think if I'd written my first novel when I intended to, sort of in my 20s, it would have been a much more cynical, world-weary, eye-rolly, isn't there pretty stupid book. And Which I would love to read, to be fair. <laughs> um, and, and this is, I don't know, it's a bit more forgiving, I think. I mean, is there a risk with that, with it, obviously it's not autobiographical, but the, the nature of it being a familiar world and being very from you at the point that you're at, is, is there a risk that people are going to think that you've drawn on reality very closely? I mean, Dunny, for example, I mean, is, is, is that very reminiscent of where you were? And the locations in the book are all bond. Um, and the set, there's, actually, there's a central thing in the book that is drawn from life, but it, and in fact, I thought it was going to be the center of the book, but it turns out. I was walking uh, with my mother, and there's a, there's a very odd thing in our. I'm sure this must happen in, in Britain if you're walking through a village, but it doesn't really happen in London in the same way, and that's my experience of, of the UK. But in Ireland, if you're walking down the road, every house, every house you pass has an extraordinary story that, oh, this is where uh, Mrs. So and so, she had an affair with the daughter's maths teacher. Uh, this is the, the, when, of course, she had to go to London. <laughs> and then, uh, is that like purgatory? Yeah, this is so and so. Uh, you know, they had uh, they were bitten by a tropical spider on a yeah. holiday in Australia. She died there, but they brought her body back. That, <laughs> and it, and it just seems every house seems to have one of those things. So I was walking with my mother, and and mums know them all as well. Oh, absolutely. And so I'm walking along, and it was just, it was a country lane, and I just noticed a kind of a glint of sunlight. I thought, what's that? And I looked into the kind of these bushes, and you could say, oh, that's a bit of glass. And then you cross the road in the back, and it was sort of roughly the outline of a house, but completely consumed by foliage and bushes and ivy and all sorts. And my mother said, oh, yes, that house. That house was owned by a farmer, and there were three sisters who lived down here. And one of the sisters uh, was his housekeeper. Uh, but everyone knew that more was going on, and that one day he would make an honest woman of her. And she was at home, and she looked at the newspaper, and she 
saw his engagement notice for another woman. Good boy, boys, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, saw his engagement notice for another woman at land on the other side of the valley. And she did have land, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she went to the house. He wasn't there. He was obviously gone for the, for the land. And I, I, this is my mother's version of the story. That she cleaned the house and she came out and locked the door and no one ever went into that house again and it took me back. So that, I love that That's image amazing, of that house. Yeah. So that, I thought that image of that house would be kind of very central to the book. In fact, it's not, it's sort of peripheral. And the, and the, I also just write that sort of bleak, bitter, sweet romance of that for a whole novel. Uh, sort of beyond me as a, a novice novelist. So I kind of put in a crime element and a sort of yeah. You get lots of glimpses of that, aren't you? Yes, yeah. no, the, the, the sisters are in the book. Yeah. Oh, gosh, that's, that's actually crushed my soul a little bit. That's so sad. <laughs> You're like, and I bought that house, bulldozed it, and now it's modern flats. It's yeah, lovely, lovely views. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered if actually that was kind of um, a similar that I had about when you're planning these people's lives, obviously we only see so much on the page, we don't get to know everything that you know about them, so do you have sort of spider di diagrams or you know lists of attributes about them that we don't know yet, but it helps you flesh them out? I did make a lot of, I, I, I you know, you kind of ask people for advice about them, and uh, the only person who did give me advice, well now I've forgotten, oh David Nichols, uh, wrote one day and, and uh, good person to ask yeah that's what I thought and he said people get you know very um, snobbish about writing frameworks and structures and things but he said do it it's the only bit of advice I have for you have a framework and then I mean, you don't have to stick to it things can go off in either direction you get lost and surprising things happen and that, and that is true all of that did happen but I did do a structure and so I need a narrative framework narrative framework but then within it you know you know how old people are, okay. you know, things about yeah. them. Um, but then, you know, because when I interview questions, and they, they kind of go, and the characters have got a life of their own, you think, oh, shut up. <laughs> and, but in fact, it did happen. There is that excitement. You're, you're writing, and then you kind of think, oh my God, at the end of the next page, I know what's going to happen, and oh, I can't wait to get there. This is really exciting. And those, you were, those were the great days. Those were the really good days. Uh, where, it, where yeah, there must be days where you think I've just written a chapter and I don't even remember where you know sitting down and starting, and then other days. It and, and that's the other thing you've got to do is keep a goal. You know, just and I think that's why most books end prematurely <laughs> because people hit the hard day and stop down tools and kind of think oh, I'm stuck. Whereas if you have a deadline, you have to live with this thing. You have to keep going, even. If Party, your 53rd party, and you were like, and quick, <laughs> and done. <laughs> and, and it was really annoying because I had a dinner, and uh, I was saying, oh, you know, we're going to this morning on the bridge, oh, and they went, uh, oh, how amazing it must have been just to type the end. I didn't type <laughs> the end. I didn't do that. Ah, <laughs> I'll never get a chance again. Um, is it, uh, uh, do, do the worlds overlap? I mean, we said this is, this is a complete departure, really, from your your day job, but I feel like you're a people watcher. I mean, in what in what you do with, with a TV show, you're looking at people, how they, what their little foibles are, you're kind of looking for that connection and that you're very disarming. Is, are you, were you kind of logging all of that and then that came out in the book? But I, we all, I think we all do that. Yeah. I think we all do that and that's why people, people like telling stories and why people like reading stories. And that's, in the end, what this book is. It is a story, it is a tale, and hopefully there's enough twists and turns and things to keep you occupied as, as, as you go along. 